Hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another speed paint and in this one I'm going to be doing one of my Puss Cat. And this is just a quick little whiz through of all the screenshots that I've taken through the entire process of this. I'll also be putting up a gif of this once I'm finished. But as you can see what I'm going to be doing is sketching it and then going and painting everything in grayscale and then we're going to be going and putting the colorization on with colour filters and also some hard light and overlay filters. So here we go, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be starting off just with my crappy little sketch that I've got from um, some of the concepts that I put down to start with. They had quite a big sheet of these, I think there was maybe getting on for about 8 or 10 of them. Before I decided which pose I wanted to pick exactly, so I went with this one because I thought it showed enough of a face and just, you know, at a nice kind of angle where most of it is visible as well. I didn't really notice until later that it's pretty much the same angle as one of the references that I've got closer down to the bottom on the left right now, but at the moment I was just kind of rolling with it and uh, trying to use all those refs that I've got at the side of her from different angles to build her face up with the kind of shapes that she's already got in her face which is why you can see me kind of blocking down a lot of different shapes in her face just to note where everything is so that I can figure out later where the shadows are going to fall depending on what kind of lighting direction that I want to go with. I'm also going to try and get in all of that hair around the front of her, a bib as we call it. <laughs> A lot of the shape around the side of her face right now is going to be a little bit washy or a little bit chunky for a while as well. As you could see in the screenshots before, a lot of it is very kind of pulled in closer to her face so that I've still got room to put in all those little wispy hairs around the side of her face later because I want to lighten those up with a bit of black backlight that's just going to pull forward the colour that I put in the background and not get lit up too much by the ones at the front, especially on the side where the light isn't going to be hitting it as much. But what I'm trying to do right now is just draw out the bulk of the shape of her cheek where there is going to be a big round fluffy chunk of hair that isn't going to wash out too much. So you can see that's why I've got those bigger apples on her cheeks like that. And now that I've got that a bit more cleaned up, what I'm going to go and do is start working on the edge and the framing that I want to put around her. And I'm going to do something similar to the last one that I did with the dog, which I will put a link to at the end of this if you'd like to see me do a similar one that's a little bit more towards realism with photo refs and stuff. Um, and I just want to make it kind of Art nouveau -y and flowy. Uh, she's quite pointy in some places because of all her chunky hair, so I want to be able to round out everything else in the background we're going to make it kind of swirly and try and make something that looks interesting i also end up going and changing it to a little bit more of an oval shape just because it's cutting into her ears a bit too much or they're cutting out of it and i wasn't really liking the way that it looked so I'm just trying to come up with some shapes that frame her face nicely and work with the shapes that I've already got in the cat so that it's not fighting with it too much and it usually takes me a while to get those how I want them to look so they are going to be go, uh, I am going to go and edit them a little bit later but I've got down a bit of a base idea for now that I can warp and move around if I want to like I said I'm going to be changing it so it's a bit more oval and now we're going to go and clean the cat up a little bit more now, like I mentioned, because of all her hair and how it sticks out from her head quite a lot, it's as though I've got two lines that I could define. I could define it a little bit closer and I could also define it a bit further away where it starts to get a little bit washy. Um, but I am trying to bring it in a bit more. But on some of these bits, especially on top of her head, I've brought it out a bit too far and kind of defined it in the wrong place. So that'll be carved down a little bit later and brought a little bit closer to her head because it's getting a bit big on the top. <laughs> At this point though, I am still trying to keep everything quite chunky, so I've got the base down for everything. You can see I've gone and put a little bit of a base onto behind her as well, so she's kind of silhouetted and we can see the edges of everything. And I'm going to go and clean that up again once I've got this sketch a little bit more solid, and we're going to have one that is a bit cleaner then. And that'll be the piece that I start going and painting my values onto then. What I'm going to do at that point as well is keep this sketch that I'm doing at the moment and put that over the top. I think I also set it to multiply so that it's a little bit easier to see once I start getting different values on because it's going to kind of react with what's underneath and make it darker. Um, so it's a bit easier to see than just having it at reduced opacity and that's going to stay as my guide. So now I'm going to go and start blocking these edges in, just going and painting around it. I'm trying to keep her cheeks quite rounded so that I've still got, like I mentioned, a little bit of space outside of that to go and define the kind of more pointy side to a face that we've got where the hair kind of bunches out and comes into little points. 
And now that that's done, I'm going to get my ruler and the symmetry ruler and split it into two so that it reflects the same thing either side. And I'm going to put that down the middle and start messing about with my designs around the edges again to frame it. I kind of like the shape that I came up with as well, where it bunches out a little bit around the side of her face so that we don't get it overlapping too much with her or end up with any tangents in the shapes. And then bringing it in a bit more at the sides so that we don't have just a big empty space either side of her shoulders. And then it's just a case of once I've got the design that I like going and redoing it cleaner so that I've got a nice finished version for me to use with it. Um, I'm also keeping that circle or oval in the background separate as well so that I can go and eat into those shapes and separate them a little bit so that I can make them look like they're either folding over or under each other. And that's something that I'm going to leave till a little bit later, it's just going to stay flat for now. Um, but when I do that, that's going to get rid of any kind of awkward looking tangents where they join up and there's not really any gap between them. And that should make it a little bit nicer and smoother. Just then you might have been able to see as well some of my earlier sketches where I'm just messing about with some different poses as well. Um, where I've got a little bit of a sheet of them where I was trying to come up with a pose that I liked for us so that I could fit it into a shape like this. Um, anyways, there I go cleaning that background up. Uh, let's let's have a little bit of a jibber jabber actually about the cat that I'm painting. I got her when I was about 12, I think, which was quite a while ago now. She's about 11 this year, so it was around 11 years ago. I think it was in 2008. Um, got her from some little shelter place where her and her brother had been abandoned. Uh, I did want the two of them because her brother looked basically the same as her, but he was, he was missing an eye um, and I ended up getting her. But Fam wouldn't let me get the both of them, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have had the both of them because they were both adorable and lovely. So sweet little buff tabby babies. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think the person there, or I kind of remember them mentioning that they got pulled out of a drain. Someone tried to chuck them down a drain to get rid of them and, and they rescued them. And uh, now, now she's my best friend, so so good. <laughs> my, my little buff BFF. <laughs> For anyone who isn't familiar, um, buff is the name of the colour that she is. I think it's also called cream, maybe? I think cream's another word that it's called, but it's not ginger, it's more of a blonde, it's sort of diluted ginger. It's something to do with a genetic mutation that causes the colour to be a little bit weaker. But my friend just kind of likes to refer to her as strawberry blonde, which is, is probably a little bit better of a description of her, to be honest. Anyways, at this point now, I am starting to just block in some of my values. I'm trying to keep it quite simple and blocky so that I'm not worrying about any gradients too much. That's something I'm going to start worrying about later once I've got all these chunky shadows down and I can start softening it out um, with all of the rounder shapes that are on her. She's got kind of pinkish ears as well that I want to add in later. They sometimes look a little bit more of a purplish colour and I'm pretty convinced that it's just the contrast between her yellowish gingery fur that's causing it to bounce up and come up a little bit more blue purple pink colours but I want to try and get that in a bit later so that it's got that sort of fleshy colour especially around where her hair gets kind of thin just in front of her ears coming down to the top of her brows. As I'm working on this too, I'm occasionally going and tweaking the values that I've put down. I don't always get them right the first time. I am trying to bump up the contrast a little bit. Although I've got these references and they're quite light, just because their colour's quite light, I do want to make it a little bit more contrasty and just have a bigger difference between them so that there is a lot of contrast and shadow in there. Something that I'm starting to do now as well is get the airbrush in there and wash it out a little bit. I'm also going to be bringing in some um, multiply layers just over the top like this to darken some parts um, and bring those shadows in a little bit darker and also let that kind of handle some of the gradients for me and how it um, overlaps from like one value to another without disturbing them too much. Uh, then I'm also going to be bringing in a different sort of textury brush that's got a bit more of a fur kind of bite to it so that it grabs on a bit more and gives it a bit more texture rather than just being um, kind of flat like it is currently with just gradients but it's gonna make a bit more of an appearance later as I start to do all of these looser bits that are just getting illuminated at the back as well. Um, I'm also using another kind of inky brush or I think this one that I'm using might be in the watercolour menu section on Clip Studio because the inky one still kind of comes across if it's if it's smaller, as a bit more like just the pen tool. 
and it doesn't really have a whole lot of texture to it unless you use it really large. So I wanted one that had a little bit more kind of flow and movement and a bit of grip to it. So I went and chose a different one. You should be able to see it up there in the menu at the moment that I'm using. And if it ain't there around now, then it definitely will be later because I was using a lot of it for all these little nibbly details around her nose and all the fur and stuff. You can probably tell as well that I'm trying to stay away from the eyes a little bit because I, I kind of get too into noodling those out too much um, if I start doing that. What I also want to be doing later is going and putting more bits over the top because she's got little these cute little ginger eyelashes that kind of come and sit just over the top of her eyes and obscure them just a little bit so I want to go and add those in later as well and I don't want to get caught up with that kind of thing where it's tiny little details that should be added like way later on in the process on top of the stuff underneath that's a little bit more solid but I want to get all this fur and everything sorted first because that's the kind of main bulk of everything and I don't want to mess that up what I'm also trying to do is avoid getting into any colours or values that are too bright. So you can see that the kind of base colour that I've got down for it, or the base value where the light's hitting quite a lot, is still sort of grey in comparison, especially to the references that I've got over on the left. But what I intend to do later is go and put some glow on the top of that, just to make it um, kick up in a few places, and that's going to give me other little gradients that are going to overlap with other bits that I've got on there already so I don't want what I'm going and putting that glow onto to already be like overexposed and just so bright that I can't really take it any higher than that so I'm purposefully trying to keep it a little bit lower down so I've still got that wiggle room to bring those values a little bit higher up and give me that that boost and the glow that I want later. As I do more art, I'm starting to realise that a lot of it is kind of formulating a game plan and knowing when to do certain little, little bits of detail, especially when you're doing something kind of painty like this. Um, it's knowing not just where to put stuff um, and how to do it, it's knowing like when in the process is the most appropriate time to do it, when it's going to make it the easiest, when it's going to be the kind of easiest to fix if you kind of screw it up and need to redo it. Um, and also kind of arranging your layers so that you don't screw yourself over at any point. It's definitely not just a case of putting the right thing in the right place. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of accounting for what you're going to do, especially with the way that I usually plot stuff out um, and go about it. I don't really like to treat things like a one layer painting until I get a bit later into it and then I start doing overpaints and then I treat it like a one layer painting. So I have to anticipate what kind of moves I'm going to be making so that I can account for the changes that will be coming later down the line. Which is also why it's really important to kind of build yourself up a process that you know is going to work. And I kind of mention this a lot, especially with commissions when people ask me. Um, it's really important to have a process that you know works so that you can do stuff like this. And kind of anticipate what things are going to need to change later so you can account for them earlier on before you do make those changes. And if you need to like leave anything out beforehand. Um, because if, if you go straight in and you kind of miss out something like that because you're trying out a new style, especially on a commission, then you're going to end up wasting time and just potentially making a big mess. <laughs> okay, so now at this point I'm just doing a little bit more noodling and then I get to the point where I'm starting to get a bit tired of that. I need to do something else to keep my attention on it, so I'm going to go and have a look at some colours that I can go and put in. Now originally with this I was thinking of putting in sort of a piney green in the background, but I thought we'll try a couple of different colours. Um, I ended up keeping it a little bit more towards sort of midnight blue where it's just kind of verging on teal a little bit, especially in that middle bit. Um, and it's also kind of reflect reflecting that but a bit darker in the outside of the border that we've got there. Um, but I do end up changing it later to reflect some of the different colours that I end up putting into the cat once I start doing the painting on her as well and start colourising her. Um, you can see, like I mentioned, I'm going and picking out all these little details on my design around the edge as well, so that we've got all this kind of interweaving of it, um, of all the different little swooshes, so that it doesn't just look like a flat thing. They look kind of separate, and um, that oval around the back also looks like it's interwoven with them as well. Uh, I know you guys like to know how long things take as well. I think altogether this took me around 20 22 so somewhere between 21 and 22 hours i think was the total for all of it from start to finish 
Anyways, now that I've got a few more of my values down, what I'm starting to do is go and get new layers and start over painting on top of them. So I've got those base colours in the background and now I can start to go and put any other little details that I want over the top of them. So we're starting to put all this fur into the ears. I'm kind of carving the top of her head down a little bit more. Um, and I'm also pulling it in just a little bit there so I can wash it out into more of a furry shape. Um, she's going to look a little bit shaven and bald for a while just because I do need to pull it in a little bit more because we're going to still be able to see some of that background through her hair that's a little bit more wispy and thin around the edges where it's just sticking out a bit. So <laughs> she is going to look like she's been kind of shaved around the scruff. <laughs> Um, I'm also going and giving just a little bit of bite to those edges so that it's kind of furry instead of just being flat um, in the original way that I went and did it with the pen. Uh, I'm going to try and bring in a little bit more of that light that's going to bounce up onto the side of her chops there and give us sort of an edge lighting all the way around the back of her. Um, and that's going to be in a little bit more of a blue later as well so that it brings up um, a lot of that colour from the bottom and the background. And you can start to see now she's starting to look a little bit more like a cat at this point. She's getting more fur back on her, not as bald now. Um, I did go and put a little bit of colour on her before just to test what it was going to look like with the colour filter to see if I could get it a little bit closer to the sort of blonde orange colour that I kind of want. Um, there are some places on her where she's a little bit more ginger, like on her ears, which is why they are a slightly darker colour just on the back of her ears where all the fur is. And like I mentioned, I'm starting to go and put a little bit of texture into the fur as well now so that it's got a bit more kind of grit to it, it's got more texture, um, especially onto a bib needs quite a lot doing to it. And then I kind of get to the point where I'm getting fed up of looking at it again, so I start doing something just a little bit different. So I start trying to go and experiment with the colours again, have a look at that and see if I can block down some that I can start using later. If I like the look of, just as a bit of a little test thing, I'm going to go and plonk some stuff down. I'm going to bring that blue into the background, I'm going to bring in that purple and the pink that I mentioned that I wanted on her ears. I'm going to bring that to her nose as well and also try and bring a little bit more saturation into those more orangey bits like the little tear stripe down the side of her eyes and the tabby markings on her head and two behind her ears. Um, and then once I like the way that that's looking I turn it off and go back to my painting underneath now that I'm like oh hey yeah it's starting to come together a little bit more with that it's gonna work when I go and put that back over the top so just a bit more kind of noodling while I keep going. At this point as well I started thinking right the values that are around the eyes are a little bit darker so let's go and put the, those in now that I've done that um, and then I can go and adjust anything else that needs adjusting before I do like too much detail so I'm starting to put in a little bit of detail around them and also around the nose where it gets darker there and around her chops as well and they do look a bit underdone and daft at the moment <laughs> but it's given me a little bit of a base to go and work from. Um, I'm also going to go and put some more details in around her chops there so that I've got placement for her whiskers as well. I've plotted out where I need the stripes to be where her whiskers are going to sit. I just need to add in some more different values onto them and add in the kind of wave that we have in on where the whiskers point out and where they kind of recede a little bit as well. And then we're going to go with a little bit more level correction just to have a look at that again and some more sort of overlay, cut multiplied layer to bring out those shadows a bit more. Like I say, I do what I do on it quite dark and contrasty so that she stands out and we can get some really nice colours in those shadows. Um, I'm testing it with my colour layers over the top a little bit as well um, and turning my sketch on and off as well just to make sure that I'm still keeping to that. Now that I'm starting to get to the point where I'm not using it as much, I just like to turn it on and off every now and then to check it. And now as we go forward, it's just going to be lots and lots and lots of cleaning up all of this stuff and adding more textures in and just defining the shapes a little bit more. There's shapes under her eyes and where it kind of comes down to um, around her chops that needs defining a little bit more. We've got all this hair around her ear on the other side that needs defining more. Um, around the very edges of her ears, it's a lot whiter. So there's kind of a white stripe right around the edge of her ears that's kind of cute. Um, and contrasts against the darker orange that we have there as well. Um, a bib lead needs a lot more painting, a lot more texture put into that. I am going to make it a little bit more scraggly than it is at the moment. Originally when I put it down it was a little bit too smooth looking but what she does a lot of the time is kind of licks the hair on it and then because it's quite long it gets stuck in her mouth and kind of gets covered in slobber so it ends up like a little bit scraggly most of the time. It's never just nice and smooth so I don't want it to um, look too tidy because she never does 
it's a little bit of an issue for her to be honest with her long hair I, I feel kind of sorry for her sometimes she used to have terrible trouble with um a, a bib just underneath her chin getting quite matted just because it'd get like way too long especially when she was little it seemed to grow much longer on her um but as she's grown up and got a bit bigger it's sort of equalized a little bit and kind of stayed the same length while the rest of us grown so it doesn't get quite as badly matted now but it, it does occasionally so you have to give her a trim now and then um, but I've taken to, even though she doesn't really much like it, trying to go and trim it down a little bit. Just so it's a bit shorter and tidier on her and she doesn't get it stuck in her mouth as much and she's trying to clean herself, the poor thing. So um, it's, it's a little bit of a hassle because she really doesn't enjoy it. She knows exactly what you're doing when you get the scissors out <laughs> to try and trim her a little bit. Um, and you tend to get a bit of a bap with her hand if you uh, if you go on for a little bit too long. So you've got to be kind of tactical about it and use the time wisely <laughs> and have a go on a couple of different occasions to uh, be able to trim her. I guess it'd be nice to be able to take her to the vets to sort her out for that kind of thing, but she would have their arm off, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of stuck doing it. So uh, she, she has a nice trim and then a brush and then she's okay. She's okay then, she doesn't end up with like too much fur stuck in her mouth. She is a nice little puss cat though, she's my my best friend. She uh, gets a little bit upset if I don't let her sit by me. Uh, that's 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 pretty much it. She gets very upset if I don't let her sit by me or if I move her out of the way when she's sat by me if I need to get up and shift. If you guys hang about on the Discord, which there's a link to down below, then you've probably seen me post a picture of her, of her squeezing herself next to me on my chair while I'm trying to work and she just kind of leans on my butt like it's a pillow. It, it's It's kind of cute. It's kind of irritating, but it's kind of cute. Um, anyways, what am I doing now? I am making her hands just a little bit bigger because they were a, t a tiny bit small for a bit there. They needed getting a little bit bigger. I'm also going to keep those a bit lighter because they have sort of a nice satiny sheen on them and they're quite light compared to the rest of her. Um, a lot of the ginger seems to be around the, the, the kind of top middle back of her. Um, so down the middle of her back, down the middle of her tail, and on the back of her ears, top of her head, and that kind of stuff. And then the rest of her on her underbelly and her feet and everything is a bit more towards white. Uh, anyway, something else that I end up going and changing a bit later is that one ear at the side that's closest to us on her. Um, it's going out a little bit too far, so I end up bringing that in a bit later. It's just kind of escaping off to the side a bit too much. Um, anyways, at the moment, I'm starting to go and put her whiskers in just to know where they are, and that's a layer that I... Um, turn off for a while. I like putting things down over the top and then, you know, turning them off and being able to go and keep picking at things underneath without um, affecting anything that I've gone and put on top uh, that should really be added in later. Sometimes I like to put things on um, like with the colouring just to see the way that it's gonna go um, so that it gives me a little bit of a push to keep going with it. It can get a little bit discouraging if you just kind of keep going on something after a while or if you don't really have any kind of break from it or anything. Um, if, if you kind of mess about with it a bit and kind of, you know, just have a go at what's going to come next on it, then that usually helps me a little bit to stay interested in what I'm doing. Um, she does need a lot more light in just on that side of her face as well. I ended up making it a little bit too dark, so that's going to get brought up later so that we get um, a bit more of a kind of triangly shape just around her mouth uh, and the side of her chops where it goes down into a nice soft like swoosh just from the bottom of her eye and down into her chops there and we're just going to zoom forward a little bit on this as well to where I'm messing about with my tone curves again and seeing if I can make it a little bit darker a little bit lighter I'm also going to bring in those um color layers over the top so that I can have a look at that and see how that's going to react to it if I adjust the layers underneath it so I get that to a point where I'm happy with it and I start mucking about with them again. Uh, when I did put the colour layer down I've just put it over the top of it and changed it a little bit in some areas so it's pretty much flat but I've got little bits of differentiation where there's different colours in there um, but after that and reducing it down quite a lot just so it's got a tiny little tint of that because like say I don't want to make her too orange because she is just kind of like strawberry blonde um, so it's a really, really pale yellow, and then what I'm going to do is, with a hard light layer over the top, go and put in my more saturated colours on top of that, so that I only get those um, saturated little boosts in areas where I want them to be. And then just a little bit more picking and poking at this, and then I'm going to have another go of going over the top with another kind of tone curve correction layer with all the different colour 
um, levels, uh, not levels, color channels at different levels and see how I can tweak it and bring some different colors in. So I ended up with this where I've got a little bit more of a boost in those blues that go into pinks. So I'm bringing in a bit more purple, but I'm also getting a little bit more of a warmer red in those shadows to contrast against the, all that blue that I'm going to have around the outside, making the edges of her glow as well. And then just reducing that to how I want it so it's not like super saturated like it was there. And then I'm going to go back to my grayscale again and start noodling that. I'm not quite ready to be getting onto the overpaint of the colours yet. I still want to mess around with all of this stuff underneath with my values um, to bring all that out before I start going and pulling colours around. I need to do a little bit more on her eyes. I think with this at first I ended up making her look a little bit too like sleepy and kind of fed up as well. So a lot later in the process, like closer to the end, I go and do some edits as well. I actually had like rendered it and kind of thought it was finished. And then I came back to it and I was like, nah, I, I don't like the way she looks. I need to go and edit this a little bit. So I went and did a bit more of an overpaint to it later. Um, so that ended up being like more towards the final one where it was having her eyes a little bit more open but you'll see me going and doing that edit to it later just with an overpaint. Um, see as well I've got those little eyelashes just coming over the top of her eyes which I think were contributing to that as well. I ended up reducing them a little bit on the later version when I overpainted it just to get rid of them a little bit more um, and indicate them just a, li a little bit more loosely rather than as chunky as they are now so that they don't change your expression too much by um, kind of blocking out the values and making her eyes look a little bit more droopy. I do quite like the way her little hands turned out though. I think I did all right with the values on them and making them look shiny. Um, I think I do go and do a bit more to them later, but uh, I, I do like the way they looked. I didn't really have to do that much work to them to make them look shiny because they're quite bright as they are and it just wanted a little bit of the kind of creasing that you get in fur when it segments and pokes up where there's a bend. Um, I kind of like the way it does it around her neck as well, but there wasn't really any areas for me to include that around her neck because it is just like a big old sea of bib fur <laughs> around her chops. Um, anyways, I'm going and making sure that I'm adding in all the little bits of kind of edge light that are going to be hitting around her chin that's coming from that background as well. I want to pull that in a little bit further to the side just to um, brighten up the side of her mouth getting a little bit more shadow onto the fur on her hands just to bring up the shine on it as well and make those brighter bits look brighter and then bringing up a little bit more density into the fur on top of her head and around her eyes and shadows around her nose as well. Now that I've got all of my values pretty much as I want them, it is just a case of me going and pulling them around uh, and bringing in any like tiny darker details that I wanted like how I've gone and put in the little whisker holes on her chops as well, where they're going to be lining up with. Um, I'm starting to add the kind of eyelids just underneath her eyes as well, where we're going to have a bit of shadow underneath those. Uh, and I'm going to line those up a little bit later because they kind of pull down to just the corners of her mouth. So I'm going to indicate that later just with a tiny little line of darker, um, a darker value against what's already there. But not quite yet, that's going to be one of the more final things that I do, but um, that's something that I've had kind of plotted out um, for a while that needs to be indicated as a shape on her. I'm also putting in those little speckles on her nose because I don't, I don't want to omit anything like that. She's got a couple of little speckles on her nose. Um, as paler skinned cats get older, they tend to get like spots on them because of, I think it's like exposure to the sun that causes it but there's not really any change in ones with darker skin. It's just on the ones with pink where it starts to turn kind of blotchy with like black blotches on it. She's got it around her lips and stuff as well. It's, I think it's kind of cute, especially the little blotches that she's developed on her nose. What I'm gonna go and do as well is redraw these whiskers in a little bit clearer and I'm gonna be able to go and change the colors to ones that I like. I do quite like the colors that have ended up on this as well. Um, she is looking a little bit shaved still at the moment, so I'm going to go and add more fur around the edges of her in a little bit, but th those whiskers just need to come out and happen now, now that we've got the rest of her down and she's looking a bit more solid and colourful. And now we're starting to get to the point a little bit later in this where it's starting to get closer to done. We do want quite a lot more details on the go. Her eyes need to be finished off and we need like that fur around the side of her face. Um, I'm also going and changing just that colour in the background because 
a lot of those shadows that I've got on her face now are a little bit more towards purple so I thought it'd be nice to go and mirror that in the background so that it kicks out um, like that purple that I mentioned that I really wanted in her ears that I've got down there now and also that are in the rest of the shadows um, under her chin and around her eyes so I thought it worked a little bit better than just having it all blue because it's kind of blending into each other then but if it's got something that um, mirrors the colour that we've got already in the painting then that's going to make it look better and enhance it just a little bit um, now we're to the point where it is just just more noodling, just more picking at it, just pulling colours around and moving them a bit. I don't want to interfere with it too much because because of the way that I've put it down where I've done my grayscale first and then I've gone and put my colours over the top with a colour layer and then a hard light layer and overlays over the top. Then that gives me a whole bunch of nice little gradients. You can especially see it just at the side of her face there where it starts to blend into a bib. Um, and it's all just different little tufts of fur and it's got all these different gradients from oranges and blues and greys and sort of purples in there. I don't want to interfere with that too much. I want to keep that. I just want to put a few more details in. So I'm to the point now where I need to not overwork it too much. This is as well just before I go and move that ear. I think what I did was just like go and select it and shift it over to the left slightly with the current view of it um, so it's a bit closer to the middle of her head and lines up better with where it should with her eye as well um, but you'll see that move uh, once it does because I didn't do it actually on the recording I think there was a little bit where I didn't record where I made some edits to this um, closer to the end where I wasn't really liking it and I thought oh I'll just do I'll just do a few little nibbly edits you know I won't do much to it and then I ended up doing a bit more and I thought oh maybe maybe I should have recorded that maybe um, but hey ho it didn't end up getting recorded but th th there it is I'm also going and doing a lot of editing to the eyes now and kind of overpainting with those to get more detail into them. I'm softening out around the pupils as well, just with a little bit of a softer colour so that it's still quite dark, but brings in just a little bit more colour into it. Um, and also lightening some of the bits up just where we've got that bit of glow that I'm going to bring in at the side um, and where we've got a little bit kind of bouncing up from the side of her face over there as well. Uh, they just needed quite a lot more detail in them. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more to them in a minute as well. And on some bits I go and just reduce the amount of colour that I've put on just and grey it out a little bit um, with some layers over the top so that it's not as bright, especially on a bib where it should be quite white as well. I'm going to bring in a little bit of shine onto that eye as well, hopefully to open that up a little bit, make it a bit more shiny. And then some just last little edits around her bib to, like I say, make it a little bit more scraggly. Any bits that I thought were too soft, I just went and added a few little loose hairs onto to break the shapes up a little bit so that they aren't, like, too clumpy but also not too soft. Give some just a little bit um, of a break in the sharper shapes that I add in them. I also had to go and erase quite a lot of the kind of colour overlays that I put over this because they were leaking kind of outside of the shape of where she was as well so that needed fixing and I also went and widened the canvas a little bit and we're going to come back to it where I've done a few edits like I've brought the ear in and then I'm just going to go and clean up some of those edges you can see I've gone and edited her eyes as well um, and added in those lines just down the side of her chops going up to where her eyes are as well so that that's blocked out and you can see it looks just a lot better now that I've opened her eyes up a little bit more I much prefer the way that it looks like that and this is where we're getting right to the end of this where it should be finished we've got all that tuft around the side of her face I sorted out a lot of the values around the side of it as well and as I got to the end of this I was sort of thinking something looks a bit wrong on this so I left it for a bit and came back to it and I figured out her eyes are a little bit small so <laughs> I went back to it and I made them a bit bigger and then I've gone and just overpainted around them so that they fit in a little bit better and now she looks more like the cat I spent most of the time painting this thinking it looks technically fine but um, I think with the way I lined it, I ended up making the eyes a bit small anyways. And there we go, we're done. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. If it did, give us a like, share if you think it'll help someone else and subscribe for new videos on Fridays. There'll be links down in the description to everywhere that I post stuff as well as where you can get prints of things that I've already drawn and my commission info. I also stream like most weekdays if you guys wanna come along and join a stream. There's links to everywhere that I stream as well down in the description. I stream on Twitch and Picato 
as well as YouTube at the same time. Also hit that bell if you want to get like notifications for when I stream, like maybe if YouTube lets you. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching lads. Here's some relevant videos, like the one that I mentioned before, where I'm painting the dog in a similar way to this one, and a few other ones. Uh, yeah, th thanks for watching lads. Bye bye.